If you're looking to get a used computer, then chances are it's going to come with a used hard drive. And here on the channel, I actually make it a hobby of mine where I go out and look for quite a lot of used computers. And when they come with a used hard drive, usually most of the time, I find that those used hard drives are okay. However, there is a few things to look out for. In today's video, we're gonna go over those certain things. Take for instance, this problem right here is the aesthetic of a drive. This is the first thing I'm going to warn you guys about. If you see a hard drive, whether it's in a PC, or of course, if you're like me and you actively look for hard drives on their own, then you see one like this that just looks terrible. Avoid it. That's my personal opinion. I found in the past, the more banged up a drive looks, the higher the chances that it won't work. To the point where if I buy used hard drives, I'll be looking at things like not only the sticker and if it's got some kind of dent in it or something like that, but also the drive itself to see if it's been opened before. And there are easy ways to look at this, and that is just look at the drive closely on inspection. And if you notice that it's got some damage on it and the person can't provide a report or show you that the drive has no bad sectors on it, then I would seriously avoid that because it's most likely just going to be a total waste of your money. However, that being said, if we look at the price of a new hard drive, we can see that they come in, at least in the US, around 45 US dollars, and then in Australia, they can come in over 55 Aussie dollars, which makes them quite an expensive item. And when in the past I've picked up one terabytes, for example, I've got them for around about $20 or half the price of that of a new hard drive. So generally, just like with any used part, your 50% price of a new product should be that goal that you aim for in terms of extracting price performance out of something even like a used hard drive. Now, at that price, it can add some really good value to a computer because when someone asks me about buying a PC, they never, and I have never had this question before, and that is, is the hard drive used? And so we've got one terabyte or two terabyte in higher end builds or middle range builds. No one ever asks that question because I guess they trust the seller to not sell a bad drive. So today I'm gonna to take you guys on a tour with these used hard drives. Let's get into it. But one thing's for sure is if you do hear this noise right here on a drive, then seriously, if that is your hard drive, I want you to pause this video, back up the data on that thing ASAP because it doesn't have long left. And if you're buying a hard drive with a noise like that, then you just wasted your money. That is, don't buy that drive. So we've got two drives here that don't work at all. And it's quite bizarre to the point where this one here won't even have a spin on it. So if you touch a hard drive like this one here, for example, when the power's on, there should be vibrations going through that drive, at least when you initially boot the PC and within the first couple of minutes of going into Windows. That means that the drive works, the spindle works, and there's no bad noises coming out of the drive itself. And now that's only the first stage to get through. As we heard in the intro with that bad hard drive making that noise, that thing was well on its way out. But some of these drives, they can present some very weird problems. Like this one right here, this is a brand new Skyhawk uh, surveillance from Seagate. And this drive doesn't even show up in the BIOS, nor does it show up in Windows. So it's pretty much a drive that's just not getting any power to it. And it's pretty much DOA in that it needs to be replaced. And that can happen to any drives, whether it's used or new. When you get a drive and it doesn't show up at all, then that's the first problem. It just doesn't work. If you can get your money back or get it replaced, then I'd recommend doing so. The next problem we've got here, however, is another two terabyte drive. And this one presents an even weirder problem. And now it won't show up in the BIOS. However, upon booting the PC up, it's got a very weird problem with it where it won't report to the actual motherboard itself. And so it won't even allow the computer on the regular SSD in the background there to boot up normally. And so this drive right here is yet again, another dud. And so we've got two dud drives here, plus that one terabyte in the intro that made the noises. And so plugging in a normal drive, what you should see is when you go into your BIOS by pressing the delete or F2 keys is that you should see the drive popping up in the BIOS. 
If it's not recognized within the BIOS, that's the first indication that something's wrong with that drive, or of course, something could be wrong with your motherboard. Once you see the drive in the BIOS and you go to Windows, there is actually a really handy tool you can download called HD Tune. Now there is a pro version of this, which I use for benchmarking hard drives, but this one here is free, the uh, non-pro edition. And so what you can do with this is you can do an error scan on your hard drives itself by just opening up the program, then quickly pressing start, and then it'll go through. And we can see here, this old 80 gigabyte hard drive actually has a bad sector. So I wouldn't be using this in any computer that I'd use for myself personally. However, I do keep this drive around. And the reason being is so I can test out dodgy power supplies and the five volt and 3.3 volt lines on that power supply. And so if this drive carks it, then I know that that power supply has a bad SATA line going to it. Now, one thing for sure is if you're buying a new power supply or a used power supply, another thing to look out for is just that. Don't plug all your drives up at once. I've had someone tell me they had uh, three two terabyte drives all plugged in off a bad power supply and they lost all their data, all their work was gone. And I told them that was a rookie error when they're first hooking up a PC. So definitely be careful if you're building a new PC or if you're building a used one, especially with a used power supply. Now, of course, the best case scenario for a hard drive is you hook it up and then you go into Windows, you open up HD Tune Pro and it says OK on all the statuses of the hard drive. Now, this program is only for hard drives or at least intended only for hard drives. So if you'd run this health check on an SSD, you might come up with an error message. But going through an error scan, you should see no bad sectors at all. And then if you wanted to flip a PC, then that hard drive is OK to flip with that PC because the hard drive's OK. And the good thing is you're not going to get most likely any problems coming back in the form of someone having an error. And that's because I guarantee my PCs. So I do run health checks on hard drives before I sell those PCs. So now here's the tricky part. Both the aesthetics on these drives looks absolutely fine. And in this case, this was one that I pulled out of a PC quite a while ago. And this one here was a brand new drive, which I've got to get a return on. And so it left me thinking, well, what could we do besides that? Because the seller didn't really have any idea that this was faulty because I pulled it out of a whole build that got traded in. And in this case, it really wasn't anyone's fault. The person who traded in said the computer wasn't working. I took a gamble on it. Obviously, I got it really cheap, pulled out some good working parts, but unfortunately, the two terabyte drive just didn't work. But that being said, I've never come into a seller who regularly sells hard drives and doesn't provide health checks or at least know that those drives are working. And so in the case of me uh, actually buying dedicated hard drives and using them, I've got a very high success rate. I'd say somewhere around 95%. And then you uh, relate that back to the value where I'm getting these drives at generally under 50% of a brand new cost of a drive. I'd say that I'm really doing well in terms of winning. And I'd say most of the time I get these drives around 35% of the cost of brand new. So that 5% uh, failure rate is really nothing to worry about. And in those cases, at least the 5% of the drives, I generally get them from one-time sellers rather than regular sellers. So if you are buying used hard drives, regular sellers will most likely have health checks. They would have checked the drives. And then of course, people who are selling one-time deals, you can just ask them if the computer boots up okay. And so if the whole system, as we saw before, with this faulty two terabyte drive right here, if the hard drive's in it faulty, then it most likely won't even boot, or of course that drive won't even show up in Windows. So if it boots to Windows, it's generally got a good chance of having a decent drive in it. Now, what about the age of these drives? And that's something that we've got to look at when it comes to used hard drives. I generally don't buy dedicated drives that are older than around six or seven years old. So if they're from 2012 and I get them cheap enough and the health checks out on them, I'll be like, sure, let's add that to the kitty. But generally drives from 2010 and before, I won't buy them dedicated. Usually they're thrown in with some potatoes that I get for real cheap, but I wouldn't recommend buying drives this old. But that can be a catch 22 and that is, we've got a new hard drive here that doesn't work. Then we've got a hard drive from 2006 
that does work. And so I've found with hard drives, the one simple thing that will wear a hard drive down is simply how long it's actually been used for rather than how old it is. Of course, the hard drives over time have got better and better to the point where they've got faster, but when you're buying a used hard drive, especially off one-time sellers or even uh, sellers that regularly sell them, definitely ask them how long the drive has been used for. And so if it's been used for a very long time, like actively, whether it be in a server or in a workstation, then I would ask for a health check on that drive. Or of course, if the seller says the drive hasn't been used much at all, it was a backup drive, then chances are it's still gonna run like brand new. So now the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is the actual SSDs. They've become so cheap in recent times where in Australia you can get a one terabyte SSD for around a hundred Aussie dollars on sale. And so that brings it at just over double the cost of a one terabyte hard drive. And I would much rather have an SSD than a hard drive because of course it's a lot faster, but it doesn't make any noises at all. And I've found that they're less prone to failure when you compare them to a hard drive. Now, another thing about drives in general, not just hard drives, but also SSDs, is if you go to install this on a PC and then you're installing Windows and you get error messages where you can't install Windows at all, then that generally is an indication that the drive has something wrong with it, even though it's showing up in the BIOS or it's showing up on another computer in Windows. So I've seen quite a few failures of SSDs as well as hard drives in my time. Now, of course, the most popular way to go nowadays for me personally is a used hard drive plus a 120 gigabyte SSD or a 240 gigabyte SSD. That way you kind of get the best of both worlds. Use these as a boot drive, you can have fast boot times, or of course, if you wanna put something like Dota 2 or Fortnite on this drive, you've got enough room to do that. And the funny thing is about this SSDs right here, I'm getting these for about 20 Aussie dollars a pop, which is about 13 USD, then I'm getting these for around about 70 USD. So they really are coming down in price compared to your hard drives and what you can get them for to the point where I'm really only dealing now with a new SSD plus a used hard drive because this one will get used the most and this one will usually only be for backup and games to the point where this one's gonna be getting it used a lot more because the activity and processes in Windows are going through the SSD most of the time. So in other words, the hard drives here, they aren't getting used a whole lot. So in closing out today's video, used hard drives, they can be worth it. And they're actually really good to the point where my portfolio of flipping gaming PCs really only consists of brand new SSDs and used hard drives. Combine the two together and you've got really good value for money. I'm actually at the stage now with hard drives where if I wanted to go out and buy a new hard drive, I'd actually just spend a little bit extra and get the SSD which a lot of the times is coming under double the price of the new hard drive in terms of how much storage it can hold. But to recap some of the points for you guys, if the drive looks bad, then chances are it's not going to work where the person has been very rough with it or they've either dropped it and it's incurred that aesthetic damage. And one thing that we didn't talk about earlier with hard drives is that they're probably the most sensitive part in a PC in that you can drop a power supply I've uh, actually dropped graphics cards from over two meters high for a test and they've still worked, but you drop a hard drive from even just a meter tall and it can pretty much not work anymore. There's a good chance of that. They are very sensitive, so do be careful with them. That being said, after the drive looks good and you wanna get it, if it's a one-time seller, just ask them if the PC boots up into Windows, if it does, or if they're selling the hard drive individually, just ask them to do a health check. But another good thing about used hard drives is, is that since they're relatively inexpensive, most people I've found, at least people I've dealt with, when they are broken or they are old, they just chuck them out as opposed to graphics cards, for instance. I pretty much know everyone who has a broken graphics card, they usually keep that thing. And I have heard stories of some people trying to sell those broken graphics cards as new graphics cards. And we've actually talked about this in the past with How To Deals Hunt. I'll put the link up here where I've come into this experience myself, but I've never come into it with used hard drives. Anyway guys, I'll put the link in the description below for HD Tune. It's a quick download. It'll just tell you if the status of the drive's okay. You can run a quick scan to see if there's any bad sectors on your drives. And if everything comes out good on that test, then the drive is usually good to go. 
But of course there are better programs out there that will give you a much better rating on the health. So that is another thing that you can do if you're into used hard drives much more than I am, but I usually like to keep it quick and simple and the chances are in my favor, at least with how many drives I've dealt with in the past. Though I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and show your appreciation for those used hard drives, which are often never really spoken about, but I feel is an important thing, at least for me personally, for adding value to any rig, whether it even be a used rig or a new rig. However, before we get on out of here, the question of the day comes from Prodigy and Clan, and they ask, may I know what case you bought for the setup? And he's talking about the Fortnite Chapter 2 build we did, or if you haven't seen that, I'll put the link up here, where we used a case called the Infineon 1000. I actually used it in yesterday's video as well, because it's only 45 Aussie dollars and comes with a power cable. And the good thing about this case is it's got timber glass on the front and the side, and it's not a tinted glass, so you can see all the RGB shining through when you want to go sell it. And that's a big selling point for this case. It's budget, it's actually decent build quality, and you can put four ring fans in there, and you've got a decent looking case. However, I do caution with these cheaper cases, airflow is usually terrible, and in this case, it is pretty bad. And to combat that, we just use low power consuming parts where we're not overclocking anything and we're using a RX 570, which doesn't use up a whole lot of power in the grand scheme of things and everything checks out A-OK. -okay. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you've made it this far and you're not subscribed already, sub button and ring that bell to get the videos as soon as they drop and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now, bye.